I always liked the quietness of nature, and the peace that comes with walking through the trees and into the woods. Also, watching the clear night sky is a very nice thing to do when out in the forest. Seeing so many stars just remind me of how small we really are. How insignificant is our existence? We could really disappear in an instant, and the universe wouldn't even notice. My brother always brought me with him when he went camping, and that's when I discovered my passion for nature. Now, I just like to go hiking or camping with my friends, as my brother has moved out of the country. I hope that I'll see him soon. I really miss spending time with him. I'm worried that I won't have the privilege of doing that, given the situation that I find myself in now. But hope is all that I've got. If you read this, please pray for me. I need that. I won't give specific details about me, as I don't consider them important. I'm a 26-year-old man. That's the most that I'm saying. I'll tell you how I got in this situation. I recently started to work as a forest ranger. Everything seemed okay at first. But the fact that they just took me without any interview should have rang some alarm bells. I was desperate for a job as I have very little money, so I never thought about it. The day that I arrived at the cabin was beautiful. The sun was setting, leaving off a dim orange glow going through the trees. The weather was nice, you know, your typical clear summer weather. Everything was perfect. The cabin is almost entirely made out of wood. Classic, I thought. It's big enough for one or two people, and it looked very cozy inside. I stepped through the door and put my backpack underneath the bed. I opened the wardrobe and put on my sleeping clothes. As I got comfortable, I noticed there was a piece of paper on the table, along with a survival guide and a metal crucifix. Something was wrong. I picked up the note and something felt very off about it. I could feel the liquid running cold in my veins as I started to read it. Hello, my name is Killian Sutter and I am the former ranger who worked here. I don't want to scare you but this job is not as you would expect. You see, weird things happen here and they can prove to be deadly if you don't follow carefully what I tell you. In order to be able to survive, this note will be your bible. The rules that I have written for you are things I discovered on my own while working here. I don't know if this is everything, but it's mostly what usually happens here. 1. If the light bulb in your cabin suddenly starts to flicker, lock the door immediately. Close the curtains and turn off the lights. The thing will come close to your cabin and it will try to enter. Do not panic as it will leave if it doesn't find a way in. 2. Always lock the door behind you when you go outside. Failing to do this will result in the thing waiting for you in the cabin, hidden somewhere. 3. If you hear scratching coming from outside the cabin, do not be tricked by your ears. It's not coming from outside, but from inside. Stay still and hold your breath. The thing is blind and it won't know where you are if you do that. It should leave by the time you can count to ten, rushing back through the door. 4. While outside, be as quiet as you can or it'll hear you. If it does, rush back to the cabin and barricade yourself in there. 5. If at any point you get injured, clean the wound fast and bandage it so that you can't see any red. The thing can smell it from far away and it makes it go into a feral frenzy. Also, change the bandage often. When you do that, throw the old bandage in the fire. 6. Never leave your cabin after the sunset and before the sunrise, no matter what. The thing is much more aggressive when it's dark outside. 7. Before you go to sleep, put the metal crucifix that I left you in a direction facing the entrance to the cabin. 8. Set your alarm at 3am and wake up to check on the crucifix. 
and if it has any red on it, ignore rule number six and get out of the cabin as fast as you can and run to the storm shelter. I have marked it for you on the map and the survival guide. Nine, don't try to escape the woods until your contract expires or the thing will follow you wherever you go. You have been warned. Some situations will require you to combine the rules, so be sure to remember them all. And good luck and keep yourself safe. Oh no, what did I get into? Thoughts rushed aggressively through my mind. I was both angry and confused at the same time. I didn't know if the note was a prank or if it was real. Maybe this guy Killian just wanted to scare me. But I would rather not take any chances and follow what is written on that piece of paper. At least until I realize if it's fake or not. When I got hired, nobody told me that somebody left before I was about to get into this. Maybe they knew I wouldn't accept if they had told me this. Soon after, it was dark outside. I was sleepy and I almost forgot to put the crucifix to face the door. And then I went to sleep. The next day, I woke up and noticed a big scratch on my right arm. I was bleeding. I quickly cleaned the wound and applied a bandage to it. I also threw my shirt and the stained bed sheets in the fire because they had my blood on them. I froze then. How did this happen? And then I remembered the rule. Set your alarm to 3am and wake up to check on the crucifix. If it has blood on it, ignore rule number 6 and get out of the cabin as fast as you can and run to the storm shelter. I didn't check the crucifix. I have to admit, I was scared. The list of rules were not a prank. Killian knew something that I didn't, and he wanted to warn me about it. I haven't seen this thing that he was talking about in the notes until now, but I'm sure that I don't want to see it. Not after what happened today. I checked to see if the crucifix had blood on it. Yeah, I know, I should have done that hours earlier. It seemed to be fine. Why did I wake up with a big scratch on my arm then? What was going on? I spent the rest of the day in my bed, afraid to get outside of the cabin to check the woods. That night, I followed the rules exactly as I should have the night before. I put the crucifix to face the door and I woke up at 3 in the morning to check on it. It was fine. The next five days were peaceful and I finally summoned the courage to do my actual job and go check the woods. I was quiet and I didn't attract any unwanted attention. Those were the best days. I could actually enjoy being out in nature and relax for a while. I felt so disconnected from the troubles of my life. I felt a sensation of peace. It was almost like the rules had never existed. Apart from the night ones and the door locking one. I was out there enjoying myself. I didn't miss my normal days before I got the job. I enjoyed every last moment of those quiet days. And I'm glad I did because things started to get bad. On the eighth day, I was inside the cabin, reading a book while I was in bed. And then I heard it. Scratching sounds coming from outside. I remembered the rule. If you hear scratching coming from outside of the cabin, do not be tricked by your ears. It's not coming from outside, but from inside. Stay still and hold your breath. It should leave by the time that you count to ten. I quickly closed my eyes and stood frozen in the bed, holding my breath. I could feel the breath of the thing as it was sniffing me. I think it sensed the smell of fresh meat. A quick meal. I started to count. I was about to reach ten when I heard a loud noise. The thing rushed out of the cabin through the door. I ran and closed it, locking it in the process. And then I passed out on the floor. When I woke up, it was almost midnight. Oh my god, the crucifix. I quickly rushed to put it in a position to face the door. Did I fail this roll? Was I going to die? These thoughts tormented me until 3 in the morning when I checked it. My heart started to beat fast, so fast that it could tear my chest apart. 
the crucifix had blood on it. In a panic, I grabbed the survival guide and a flashlight, and I booked it to the storm shelter. I could feel the thing following me, getting closer each moment. After a 15 minute run, I arrived at the storm shelter. I rushed through the door and I locked it behind me, and then I fell down from the pain that I could feel in my left leg. I think that I snapped my ankle, trying to outrun the beast out there. I crawled in a corner and I fell asleep, waking up just before the sunrise from the aching pain in my left ankle, and then I passed out again. As I woke up, I asked myself, how am I going to make it back to the cabin with a bruised ankle? I improvised a walking stick out of a wooden pole in the storm shelter, and I started to hike it back to the cabin. I had to get help. There was no cell service in the forest, and I didn't have a landline in the cabin. Also, I'm not a doctor, and I couldn't do anything about my ankle. As I was walking around the forest, I could feel the thing from before was watching me, smiling at me. I was easy prey. I couldn't get away from it anymore. My heavy footsteps were leaving deep marks in the ground as I was getting more and more tired. Finally, I got back to the cabin. I ate something and then I thought of something risky. I planned to leave the woods tomorrow. I knew it was stupid and I also knew what would happen if I did that. It was written right in the rules. I lost the flow of time while contemplating on my decision. And soon, it was dark outside again. I turned on the light, and soon it started to flicker. No, not now, I thought to myself. I checked to see if the door was locked, and sure enough, it was. I closed the curtains and turned off the light, as instructed. Shortly after, I could hear it. The thing was outside of the cabin, trying to find a way in. It started to claw at the walls and smash its body on the door. I accidentally caught a glimpse of what the thing looked like through a small part of a window. It was tall and it had pale skin, like it was made out of snow. You could see the veins in its skin, that's how pale it was. It had long limbs and big, razor-sharp claws. But the most terrifying thing was its head. It was human, but it was missing its eyes. It had big, dark and empty eye sockets, so dark that you could stare into them and feel a sensation of plunging into the abyss. I could feel the terrible hunger for human meat this creature had and I was scared. It wanted to tear at me, rip out my flesh and feast on it. It would be just a matter of time until it gets me. After a while, it left and I went to put the crucifix to face the door. I also woke up at 3am to check on it and it was clean. My lucky night. I had to get some rest for tomorrow. I woke up the next day and geared up to leave the forest once and for all. I exited the cabin and started to hike towards the edge of the woods. I was slow as I had to use the improvised walking stick from earlier. As I hadn't eaten for a long while and I was gripped by agonizing hunger. I tripped over and I fell to the ground. The noise was loud, loud enough to attract the thing to come to me. I saw it getting closer, and grinning its teeth in anticipation. I was done for. And then I heard something in the woods. A very loud growl was echoing through the trees and it seemed to scare the thing from earlier. And then came a beast similar to this one, running on all fours and the two clashed in a fight. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The monster which came recently scared the other, which was running like a wounded animal back to the thick tree line. I could see the beast was wearing a torn ranger uniform, or the remains of it. On the badge, I could read the name of the wearer. It was written, clear and big, Killian Sutter. The thing ran back into the woods, chasing the other beast. What just happened? I was very confused until I remember that Killian Sutter was also the name of the last ranger who had worked in this forest. Why was he a beast? And why did he attack the other one? I'm grateful that I'm alive and I picked myself up and continued to hike out of the forest. I arrived at the road and got into my car. I called a 911 as I was injured, cold and afraid. 
and I passed out after. I woke up later in the bed of a hospital. There's something clawing at the door though, and I know what happened. I broke the last rule. Don't try to escape the woods until your contract expires, or the thing will follow you wherever you go. Now I'm just sitting in the hospital bed, afraid of whatever got out of that forest and is now following me. I can sense its hunger. It wants my flesh. And I know that a door is not enough to stop it. As the hinge gets looser and looser, I'm preparing for the impending doom ahead. I accepted the fact that I'm not going to make it. But I got lucky again. As it left before, the door was broken. I feel like it's playing with me, preying on my fear. And it knows that I can't do much about it. As I'm writing this, I got discarded from the hospital and I'm sitting in my bed at home. I know it's only a matter of time before I will see that creature, but this time I won't run. I'm going to face whatever the heck that is.